Now here's something that I think many students are not familiar with, but actually is very often used, and that's the flip chart. The flip chart is basically a big piece of paper. And of course, in this case, it's like a notepad with many layers of paper on it, not just one. The flip chart is made of large sheets of paper placed on a stand. Each new sheet is revealed as the speaker turns a page. So you turn a page by turning the page. You just pick it up and turn it. You can rip it off sometimes, or you can turn it. And if you turn it, you can turn it back and go back and look at it again. These are called flip charts. They can be pages, they can be cards, very big cards, and you can move the cards or share the cards or hand the cards around. But usually they're pads of paper like this. Flip charts are really cool. They're really useful, and people use them to make a big impression. They have some really strong advantages. One of their big advantages is that they're super, super reliable. That is to say, they don't fail. They don't need electricity. They don't need a projector. They don't need an HDMI cord. They don't need a mouse. They don't need the PC. They don't need anything. They just work. You use a pen and you write on the paper. And you can prepare your slides beforehand on the flip chart. You don't have to draw right away. You could draw beforehand and have everything ready. Or you could draw part and then when you're making your presentation, you finish the drawing or you write on the drawing or you make lines on the drawing. Flip charts are really, really flexible this way and they're super reliable. That's, I think, one of the main advantages of them. This device is also easy to use and conveys a feeling of spontaneity as the speaker interacts with the graphics. This means that when you use a flip chart, it feels more human, more friendly, more interactive because you're turning the page, you're drawing on it, and people really feel attracted to flip charts. Since flip charts are not often used, they can get the attention of your audience which is really cool. So a flip chart is a great way to try to do something different. What are the disadvantages of a flip chart? Well, the flip chart can only be so big, right? So it may be hard for a large audience to see. If you have a big audience with maybe, you know, 20, 50 people, it begins to get hard to see it clearly. Flip charts are a little bit hard to carry or take somewhere because you need to put them in a big case, a big bag, and you need to carry the bag with you when you travel. So eh, a little bit hard to move around. It's not too bad, but still it's a bit trouble if you're on the bus, I think. Here's an oldie but a, good, but a goodie, and that's the overhead projector. We don't see these very much anymore, but you may be at a location that has them. Sometimes hotels have them. Sometimes older schools or classrooms have them. The overhead projector is often called an OHP. The OHP, teachers commonly use these in schools. I think maybe when you were young you saw them before. So they can be avail they're available in most places you present at, but these days they may be a little bit more rare because people have thrown them out into the trash. But still, you may have a chance to see one or use one. What are the advantages of an OHP, overhead projector. Well, usually everyone knows an overhead projector because they've seen it before, and so they're familiar with it. They understand it. You can use your computer to print, actually, slides in color, and then you can use the color transparency on the overhead projector. Remember, an overhead projector, you have a piece of plastic with the printout on it, and it goes right on the bottom and projects up onto the screen. So that piece of plastic you can prepare beforehand. And this is interesting because it's a little bit like the flip chart. In this case, you have the piece of plastic you can print, but then you can use a pen and write on it also. So you could print everything and then just use lines to make points, or you can print some and then finish drawing with your pen. 
And again, it's very much like the flip chart because you're interacting with it live and that's pretty cool and gets people's attention. What are the disadvantages of an overhead projector? An overhead projector looks like it's easy to use, but actually it requires some adjustment to get the projection large enough for the whole audience to see and align with your slides correctly. It's a little bit hard to explain, but the overhead projector can project onto the wall so you could have an audience that's bigger than the flip chart, right? The flip chart, maybe what, seven to 10 people, maybe 15 people, over 20 is hard because you have to get around, you have to get close to the flip chart. But the overhead projector is different because it projects onto the wall, it has a big picture. The problem is you need to get it focused and there's a focus adjustment. The projector can move up and down the head and you can move the lens a little bit and you need some practice to get that just right. Also, your slides, you need to print them, you need special transparency to print on. The plastic is not just any plastic, you have to buy a special kind and so that may be hard to find these days. So yeah, it's got some of this downside to it. Presenters often stand in front of the OHP and cast a shadow on the screen, which blocks the slide. This basically just means you need to practice. Because the projector is this machine that projects up on the wall, people like to stand in front of it and write on it. But when you stand in front of it, you're making a shadow on the wall and then no one can see your presentation. So you need to stand next to it while you're writing kind of sideways. And that's not super natural. That's not very comfortable. But that's the way you have to do it. Due to these problems, you should always arrive early and test out the overhead projector, OHP, beginning the presentation, before the presentation is beginning, before it starts. So practice makes perfect, I think is the point. Now, the thing that we most commonly use these days is the LCD projector. And LCD projectors are used with computers, of course, and can be found at many universities, companies, and nowadays even hotels where you make presentations. So they're very common these days. The advantages of an LCD projector are, a presentation can be easily carried on a CD-ROM or a memory stick or a memory card. Your presentation can contain videos and audio and even interactive parts because it's on a computer, basically. The disadvantages are LCD projectors and computers are a little bit expensive, especially good ones, and they may not be available when you present, so you always need to check first. I've seen times where people come with their memory stick, their USB memory stick, and their presentation's ready, but there's no computer to plug in because this place does not use a LCD projector. They use an overhead projector or they just have flip charts. I've seen that. And they're like, what do I do now? I'm stuck. I guess you can plug in the computer. We can all sit around and look at your computer. That's not very comfortable. So this is a problem. I think another problem is it's a little bit complicated. How many times have you seen this happen? Someone connects their computer and there's no signal. And they say, well, what, what now? They, Where's the remote control? Oh, no signal. What do we do next? Oh, still no signal. Well, what are we? And everybody's sitting there in the audience waiting, just twiddling their thumbs, waiting, waiting, waiting. What do I do? Sleeping, right? How many times have you, as a student, been in a classroom and even though the teacher and the students have used this equipment before, it's not working? and 10 minutes, 20 minutes wasting. The problem with that is when you're making a professional presentation, you cannot waste time. You need to be working right away. So I think that this LCD projector connected to computer has a very high risk of things going wrong. This high technology combination is experience. It's easy to experience breakdown and other problems. Always test your presentation beforehand to assure everything works. This is what I always like to do is go beforehand, even if just 10 minutes, plug it in, make sure it's working. Now, these days, usually 
people know this and they get ready because they've experienced failure so many times. But I promise you, if you don't check beforehand, the one time that you don't prepare beforehand, you don't test, that will be the one time it fails. Every other time it works fine, but the one time you didn't test beforehand, it fails. That's very embarrassing.